The government of India and the stakeholders in the biotech industry have collectively decided that they want to scale the total biotech industry of our country to a size of 300 plus billion dollars. Right now it's somewhere around 100, 150 billion dollars. And for that to happen, we all met in the 34th meeting of iBiome, which is the uh, network of entrepreneurs in the biotech and pharma industry. And we were discussing about import re replacement and what's bothering the biotech industry. And that's exactly what I'm going to tell you today. So uh, to start with, why you should watch this video as a student or a biotech professional is because if you know what's bothering the biotech CEOs, if you can come up with those solutions, probably you can make millions out of it. Okay, so this video can actually give you billions of dollars if you act on it. Okay, so st to start with, um, the meeting started somewhere around four o'clock. I reached there with uh, Dr. Deepthi Saini. So she is the founder and CSO of Protein Design Private Limited. I'm sure you have heard of her. Now, uh, as soon as we reached, they printed the 3D printed logo of iBiome. And after that, the discussion started. There was a launch of biotech drink, a papaya extract based uh, cold drink, I can say, uh, by Thomas Biotech, by uh, the CEO, uh, Bias Thomas. And I tasted it. Oh, it was amazing. But yeah, so the, those were the fun part of it. And then the real, uh, you know, uh, panel discussion started. So uh, during the panel discussion, uh, Dr. Raja, who is the CEO of Genotypic Technologies, he was writing all these notes and he gave this to me, right? So he said that later on, I can probably make a video or uh, something which where we can digitize all of this. So uh, this is from his notes, my personal uh, notes and of course, whatever we observed there, I'm going to give you a summary. So to start with, all the biotech companies, small as well as big, are facing one big problem. And that is, they have to import raw materials from US. Now, Indian regulations do not allow uh, certain things to be used from, from Indian source. So they have to import, okay. Uh, for example, organites and uh, bovine serum and stuff like that. So uh, they, they are forced to import. That's one problem. Another is if um, they have to go for any kind of raw materials, the US companies as well as uh, European companies have a monopoly. So there is nobody who is, uh, you know, uh, able to uh, produce it right here in India and sell it to the world. So if we could do that, then uh, that's an amazing thing. So anything which any biotech product which India today is importing can be produced in India. And that way, the cost of running a biotech company will come down. And that means uh, biotech companies will be profit, much more profitable. Just to give you an example, uh, Dr. Deepthi Saini ma'am is running this protein design lab. And I visited her last uh, Saturday. She has invested more than two and a half crores in setting up that lab. Right. So imagine two and a half crores because she had to import stuff from out of India. The same way, if you want to do a one CRISPR experiment, uh, the setup for the lab will cost 15 to 20 lakhs. And then each CRISPR experiment, if you want to do for a continuous one month, will cost around 70 to 80,000. But why is that? Because we are forced to import from outside. So that was the theme of this meeting that if what if we could replace that import and grow it indigenously? So for example, if you see during the pandemic time, we had COVID uh, vaccine. So initially, uh, when the COVID testing started, RT-PCR and all that, the, the kits were worth four and a half thousand rupees. But later on, it became, uh, you know, 250 rupees. Even today, you get it in 50 rupees now. So what's happening is those kits were so costly because we were importing. But when India started producing its own kits, biotech kits, problem solved and we could get cheaper COVID testing. The same thing can be applied in all the biotech products which we are producing today. So as a biotech professional, if you can think of, okay, what, are, what is the list of products which biotech industry is importing from out of India and how can I produce this in India and then sell it to the world? And for that, obviously, you need a lot of um, support and a lot of uh, mentoring and a lot of branding and marketing and sales. And of course, for that, we are always there. We'll definitely guide you. So this was one bone of contention. Another point which was made by uh, Dr. Varsha Sridhar Ma'am. So she is one of the, um, you know, CEO of a company called as Molecular Solutions Private Limited. So uh, she is actively involved in uh, last mile uh, diagnostic delivery, wherein uh, she uh, has labs across where patients come in and they can get their uh, samples tested and, you know, um, find out whether it is a 
tuberculosis or a silicosis. So recently she was in Udaipur and she was sharing her experience there in, uh, in this meeting that uh, the Rajasthan government has made healthcare free for uh, all the poor people. So now there is a great opportunity if someone is going into Rajasthan starting uh, diagnostic labs and uh, they could uh, you know directly get the payments from the government and of course uh, serve the poor people. So that's one opportunity where you can start a diagnostic lab as a biotech uh, company. Next opportunity what she shared is India has mandated that in the next 17 months we should be TB free which is tuberculosis free. So if that has to happen government is going to bring in a lot of funding into this sector and so probably starting a diagnostic lab or creating diagnostic kits which will which can serve for this particular disease can get you a lot of um, dollars right. So that's uh, the point. Now another challenge which uh, was shared by other stakeholders is whenever uh, we are running a biotech company we have to build a distribution network we have to reach out to people and the bigger companies the foreign companies are ready to give a 60 days credit period while the Indian companies are very small so they cannot uh, get a credit period so all that of course was discussed but I think uh, to conclude this uh, particular meeting it was really insightful you can see uh, the things which I have learned and of course this is Raja sir's notes my notes are separate so we learned a lot there and I uh, believe that a country of 140 uh, crore people 1.4 billion people deserve a biotech industry which is robust which is strong and nobody else except you can do that so if you want to start a company this is the right time if you want to get into the biotech industry this is the right time and it is very important to know how the biotech CEOs are thinking for example whatever I shared with you today these are great pointers to start a biotech company or think around it to get a job whatever you are planning to. At the same time uh, my point of view here is uh, there are a lot of biotech softwares also which we are using from out of India what if we could develop that software in India so if you are a bioinformatician definitely you know a lot of biotech softwares are being imported from imported from US and Europe and that costs like 20 lakhs or 25 lakhs for one piece of software right what if we could develop that in India so if you are a bioinformatician you can start thinking in that direction so there are a lot of uh, you know small small points which I which uh, we learned there so um, I'll keep you posted on more details as um, I make more videos for now this is a summary video for all of you let me know in the comment section what are your views and uh, what are the things you would like to do in the biotech industry and how you want to go ahead and if you have any questions you can always write to me at shekhar at biotechnica.org till then keep shining bye bye